whole sideways attitude the Mark has. That way I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll just turn when I want to say hi to everybody. But in the meantime, I'm busy over here. I got stuff to do. <laughs> What's going on, folks? It is the True Vapor Show number 90. Yes, number wow. 90. Wow. And we've got a special guest today, and I'm going to go ahead and throw it his way. Take it away, What's Mr. Tony. That's right, man. Representing Cordova, right? Cordova, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because ST and I got to talking, and I was like, yeah, dude, I lived in Memphis for four years. I worked in radio there. I worked at 94 on the buzz, and, and I said, I lived out by the Wolf Chase Mall. He's like, Cordova, that's where I live. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty cool, man. Hell yeah, I know. that. We found that out when we were in Vegas, and it was like, wow, that's just how right. that shit worked out like that just tripped me out so yeah, yeah well you know when i was in atlanta i ran into a couple folks out there that you know i was like oh they're, they're dude hey can we get our picture with you you know we have we own a shop in south haven mississippi i was like south haven i know south haven man i i, I went down there and, and did remotes down at the hooters down there when we had a hurricane i also used to go down there for for fireworks uh for remotes with the radio station at the fireworks stands and they're like Wait, you worked at a radio station? I said 94 on the buzz and Kramer. And they're like, dude. So now, uh, I don't know, they may be watching, but uh, yeah, they contacted me afterwards and they're like, hey, man, do you think we could get you to sign a couple? We'll send you a couple mods. We just want you to sign them so we can put them up here in the shop. I was like, I'd be honored to do that. But it still feels weird to me when, you know, because I got that confluence. You got the Kramer thing and the Vapor Trail channel thing. So definitely. But so man, what are you working on this morning, man? What am I vaping on? Let's see. I have, you know, I'm kind of predictable lately because I love my squonkers. So I've got the Archon. This is a this is a sweet squonker, squonker. And I've got the uh, Sean Maddox designs. Let's see if I can get a little light on this thing. These uh, stab wood doors that go for the Archon, which is pretty sweet. Got that. Got my logo on this one, too. It's pretty cool. If you haven't seen the Archon yet, man, these things are nice. It's 3D printed mod. Uh, you have to join a Facebook group. You have to wait for them to put out a batch. You have to X one and hopefully win a chance to buy one. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but they're really nice. Um, oh, and this one, I just uh, filmed the video for this one yesterday for the on-camera stuff, and I'm going to put this up here later on today. Mark, have you seen this thing yet? It is the, uh, the Fuchai Wild Fox. No, I have not seen that. So, like, when it was all over the uh, all over social networks and stuff, what they were doing is they had it like in this big briefcase, and they had these oh, little yeah. cartridges. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you see this thing? They yeah. look like little printer cartridges, doesn't it? Yeah, and it came like with a suitcase full of like twenty of them or something. Right. Well, yeah. I think you know what this thing would be really good for is if you're like a traveling salesman selling juice. You know, walk into the shop like, okay, well, I only need like two mods, you know, because it's built-in battery. We'll just pop in the new cartridge, and you're good to go. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot more like the RDTA box mini though, Mark and, and ST. I thought it was, you know, it looks like it, right? It's very yeah. similar, but it's not. It's as a matter of fact, that's all you get as far as the display on there is huh. seconds that you hit it, your battery and your ohms. And that's because it's not adjustable at all or anything. It's basically, um, you know, it's, it's really like a starter kit. It's a 0.5 ohm coil. These are refillable. They don't come filled with anything, obviously, because it's coming from China. There's a little rubber gasket right down there, a little silicone gasket. See that? Yeah, from what I understood, it was, it's good for, like, uh, at a vape expo for, like, taste testing juices. It would be really good for that. And having yeah. the mod, like, really simple to where you just fire the mod and vape, and that's it, you know? Yeah, there's no adjustment, man. You just, yeah. you know, use it. But it works good, though, and it does have an on and off switch on it, like, you know, like the, uh, what was it, the J150? That Segali had, but it, it looked. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be great." It's it's cool, but it's not. You know, I mean, if you're a new vapor, it would be good. You know, I know people say, "Well, uh, you know, 0.5 ohm coil is just too much for a new vapor." But for me, it would have been perfect. But yeah, it's pretty good. Check it out. How many of those little pods did you get with it? You get two of them with it. Oh, so okay. it so it's basically like you're replacing your coil when you put a new pod in there. Gotcha. You refill it until it's dead. It's plastic. It's a little bit wasteful, but it does hit pretty good. Here, check it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and in this, I have got, uh, using Redbird, like nice. this one here. It's kind of a strawberry cheesecake with crunchy cereal. Ooh, uh, and in the Archon, I've got Berry Milky. 
I'm addicted to this stuff, man. I'm loving this. You know, Kellen from uh, from Eureka makes this stuff, so that's nice. good. Um, and now, Marcus, uh, you you got the red one of this one, right? The boxer. Yeah, the red one. Yep. So, so do you have the A batteries or the B batteries? The, the twenty twenty seven hundred. Yeah. The uh, which ones do I have? I believe the A ones. I don't know where's yeah. my. The, yeah. Let me, which ones do you open up your battery compartment? Yeah, these are the 2700B, unfortunately, because I couldn't find any A once I knew that I was getting this. This is, yeah, see here on there. What's the difference between the A and the B? I don't well, know. Well, it's kind of a big difference, actually. And I, I, I just put this video up uh, last night, late last night, and I talk about this. But with the A batteries, they are 30 amp. They're lower milliamp hour, but they're 30 amp. And from what I understand from the Mooj, is that they last 230% longer than 18650s that are 30 amp batteries. Now these, the A batteries are only 15 amp max. I think you said they maxed out at 16 amp continuous, um, mm -hmm. but they're higher milliamp hour. So they're like 4,100 milliamp hour a piece. Let me see, let me look at that again. Where's mine at? Actually, they're 4,250 4, milliamp hours a piece. Oh, okay. Because when they I do last a long time, but they just you know you can't do super low ohm builds on that. But this boxer is just beautiful, man. Yeah, I bought yeah. mine from IMR, and at the time they only offered one one battery. I don't know if it was A or B. I forgot. Right. The ones well, that Brian bought are the ones I bought. Yeah. Well, Brian bought up twenty of them. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> just sell me a pair. That's all. When, when they come out, I'll, you know what? Just sell me a pair. <laughs> Uh, but what I'm really looking forward to is that boxer squonker, man. That thing. Oh, yeah. I'm heavily into the squonkers now. And when it comes to them, they're, you know, mostly mechanical. Like on this one, you know, for anybody that's not exactly familiar, that little uh, silver piece right here, when that touches the 510 pin, it's firing. Um, well, it's not great for if you're going to be carrying it in your pocket or something like that because, you know, hit that button and you could be firing your mod. But with the boxer mod, he's got a built-in on the firing button. You just click it down and it locks. Click it back up and it fires. Plus, the quality on the print looks really, really good. Buck twenty-five. If you're able to get these things without having to go through a lot of trouble, that's going to be a, a really big deal. And the last one I've got here um, is my old standby man, this Halcyon Squawker from Lost Vape. Always using this with Mod Milk in it. Mod Milk Pink. That's uh, that's my thing. Yes. Sorry, I'm going to go on with the cracker. I got the uh, VN Boss 3000 XL V3 with the um, the Sense. Oh man, Blazer Pro, and inside there I have some of Adore's Hazy Custard. Um, what else? The <clears throat> Minikin. V2 Dama with the Skill RDA, and I am dripping on some doo -doo -doo -doo, Pancake Man. Also got the VN, the Revo, with the, uh, ooh, this is the Druga, I believe it's pronounced. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. You always mess that one up. <laughs> Something like that. And I'm vaping on of uh, some of Ambition's Tasty Liquid. But I hate the labels. And that's it. Nice. All right. Well, real quick, what I'm messing with, I've got my V3 as always, my boss, with the Pharaoh RTA on there. Uh, also rocking my boss Genesis with the Icon. And last but not least, I got the little Minikin V2 with the Crown 3. And I have been enjoying this one, actually. So it's been getting better over days. And then all that stuff, I'm rocking some glory hold from Mr. Mike Vapes. Uh, what else? Oh, this yeah, shit right here, this Drip Witch. This, man, y'all definitely got to get you some of that right there. That's good stuff. That's what I'm hearing. And last but not least, where is uh shit? Oh, here it is. Milk money. That shit's pretty good right there, too. So, all right. Hold on. Let me see. I am liking the Pharaoh. I was very surprised. I'm not that big on single coil devices. 
even though I did the go bad the other day, you know, and I've been using it some, I've enjoyed it, but Mark was like, Oh, you'll really like it. You'll really like it. And I'm like, dude, just, it just doesn't man I put a build in it, started vaping on it. I was like, Holy shit, this thing is pretty damn good. So yeah, I don't um, really do single coils and that thing was pretty impressive. Yeah. Very, very surprised. Have you got, I'm certain you've got the Pharaoh, uh, Tony, right? I do. I haven't. Uh, are you talking about the RDTA? Yes. Or the RTA? Uh, you oh, know, I have, but I ha yeah, okay. I haven't wicked it up and, and used it yet. So you like that one a lot? Yeah. I, like I said, for a single coil, which I'm not really big into single coil, uh, man, it just was tripping me out. I was like, wow. Because I'm rocking it at 65 watts and it's like, it's, it's really it's pretty damn good vape. <laughs> Hold on. Try. There we go. It is damn good. Yeah, I like the single coil builds, man. That's that's you know that's yeah. one of the reasons why I really like the uh, the engine nano. That's what that's what's got on here right now. I am nice. Yeah, it's definitely been uh surprisingly good. So been enjoying that. Uh, yeah, Have you tried cool. the uh, the Casadega uh, cannoli bean nuts? That's what I've got in here right now, and that uh, and the OBS. It's man, that stuff is good. You know, pistachio was one of those for a while. I was like, I can't find a good one. You know, it was like, it, 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 maybe it was good for like the first day and then it wasn't very good. But that one's really good. Also, uh, Bosphorus from Cichwids is really good. And PIC is great from Guardian Angel. That, that, the three good ones on that one. Mike's got a cannoli on his site. What's the name of that again, Mark? Uh, was it Mr. Uh, cannoli or something like that? Something, yeah, I think that's what it is. Something around yeah. that. Uh, yeah. I love that right there. That one has like to me blown all the other ones away i haven't had it in a while but that one was definitely good if you're big into the cannoli thing no, i don't know you know i've been, I'm really eaten a lot of cannolis i probably vape more cannolis than i've eaten <laughs> <laughs> so funny stories we'll just kind of go through all this so uh, of course i've kept up with tony forever uh watched the stuff and then when we were all in Vegas last year, uh, Tony happened to walk by. I was like, oh, shit, Tony. So went up and talked to him just for a minute. I was and, like, who uh, is this big dude, man? I swear I didn't know it was your sister. <laughs> 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 and we got to bullshit a little bit, and then it, it just turned out to where I found out that he was Kramer here in the Memphis area. And uh, I was like, holy shit, because, you know, that wasn't really my style of music listening, but uh, you just you know you know the DJs that are in Memphis, sure. and that one that name always stuck out. I did hear him on the radio some, and I was just like tripping out to think, wow, you know, this is the same guy right here. So it was right. it was cool, and then to come to find out he knew the area I lived in and all that. So I've been hitting him up forever trying to get him on the show. And then we meet up in Atlanta and get to hang out. Man, we had a long time hanging out in Atlanta, which was awesome. And Tony got a little drunk. And Tony got a little drunk. <laughs> and uh, we, we got to see the other side of Tony, but Tony is a great guy. It was fun hanging out with him. And uh, Thanks, finally scored him on the show. So this is definitely a treat for me. But, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Well, it's, it's, it's an honor to be on here, man. You're a good guy. I see you got a lot of people in here in the comments. Relic Vapor. Now, Relic Vapor, he has been uh, he has been frequenting my page for a long time. Relic, you're from Philippines, right? Is that where you're at? Wow. I haven't seen Relic in forever. There he is. I'm like, dude, you need to send me some lumpia, man. I love some lumpia. I grew up in San Diego, so we had a lot of, uh, a lot of Filipino food out there. It's good stuff. <laughs> Damn, I, I'm, really I'm tripping the hell out right now just to see him in there because, like I said, he used to comment all the time, and then he just kind of he he went off into the no zone. But I'll right. see, have you back, brother? But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. So yeah, um, you know the, the Memphis thing. It's funny because, dude, I had great ratings at that radio station. It was a female-based radio station, so I don't blame you for not listening all the time. You know, it was Lenny Kravitz, Cheryl Crow, Thanks, that kind of stuff. That's funny. Um, but yeah, so I, I loved Memphis, man. The food there was great. Gus's chicken, man. I miss Gus's chicken really bad. Now they got them all over the town. Now at the time yep. they had the one in Mason and the one that was downtown. 
But, you know, uh, I missed the food there in Memphis. They'll fry anything. But anyways, the ratings were great, but we got a general manager there that also worked in Las Vegas when I was in Las Vegas. And when I was in Vegas, I worked at a classic rock station, Mail 2554 Demo. We're a little bit more racy, you know, and it's big. So he hated me because I competed against his station. When he came to Memphis, he was just, he wanted to get me out of there. He was, his stated goal when he got there was like, I'm going to fire Kramer. And I was like, well, you know, my ratings kind of say something different. So we're going to, we're going to have to agree to disagree. And, you know, unfortunately it took him two years, but after two years, he finally got me on just some little technicality and the corporate office was just like, whatever, man, go ahead, finally get rid of him. And what was great is that people that worked at the radio station would get up with me and they'd be like, dude, every time we do a remote, people are like, I don't even listen to that station anymore because they fired Kramer. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Well, the one thing that, uh, I always used to, when I would like watch your videos and stuff like that, the thing that always tripped me out about yours was you always did the green screen thing, but it would be black behind you. And it, right. I would like, all right, I'm waiting for it to blow that cloud so it looks kind of different on the setup right there. But I, I get people that will comment sometimes be like, oh, I like how you blow fake clouds, man. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let me just point something out. My job, my day job is video editor. You know, I, I do photo, video, and voiceover, a lot of TV commercials and stuff like that. And I know for a fact that it would be difficult at best to put fake clouds into a video. So why the hell would I take the time to do that? But no, it's it's green screen. And because of the way the lighting works sometimes, if I if the depending on what color my shirt is too, it depends on, you know, the color that will have to be corrected in the green screen. That means sometimes the cloud will look funny and like looks like it's got little diamonds in it and stuff. But I'm, <laughs> we all know what clouds look like, man. It's not a competition to have the best looking clouds. Exactly. Exactly. I just like the black background because it keeps things nice and clean and not distracting. Because I notice like when I watch some people's videos, I'm, I'm looking around going, what's that up there? What's that over there? I don't, I, I'm like, what did he just say? I got to yeah. rewind. Especially if you're looking at Mark's stuff, because Mark's got crap all over the place. So. Mark's got a lot of stuff in there, man. He's got a- in the beginning, I tried, <clears throat> I tried to do the whole like black background, like clean background. Yeah, I just couldn't like I don't know I couldn't get with it because like it's too focused on you like if there's no background then they're looking at you the whole time. That's true. <laughs> it's a little weird. Yeah, and after doing radio for 18 years, it's, it's weird to like have people see my face sometimes too. It's like okay, well, because you know I, I could say and do anything on the radio and nobody knew you know anything other than you know what I'm saying. So it's just weird to be on, you know. Yep. So your your channel's been growing pretty good. Is there like any uh, – have you thought about doing any other things on YouTube or branching out, like starting like another channel with stuff or yeah. just – I've, I've got a couple of other channels, actually. One of them is really small because it's just something my wife and I have a passion for looking for sea glass on, on the beach. You know, we live five minutes from the ocean, and so – you know, I love walking the beach and looking for sea glass. And what it is basically is just broken glass, trash that has been tumbled in the ocean and the sand and becomes smooth and, and it, it looks really cool. So, and it's hard to find, but once you do know how to find it, then you start looking for it. So that channel is called the Sea Glass Hunter Channel. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I, I just I haven't put a lot into it. It's been cold as hell here, so I haven't been get, uh, getting out on the beach. But wifey and I are doing that. And then I have the Picky Eater Channel. And man, you know, I'm in my forties. I've been a picky eater. I, you know, I've been a picky eater forever. So, um, I actually wanted to start that channel before I ever even thought about doing this. I really wanted to do a pilot for a TV show where I was like, okay, I'll be like Guy Fieri. I'll go in there. I'll check out their specials. And at the end of it, I'll be like, well, that looks great. But you know, I'm the picky eater. And they'd be like, oh, what are you going to do? How are you going to F this up? You know, and I'm like, all right, well, we got to take this out. and We'll try this. And can we do that? And I figured the people that are foodies would hate me. They'd be like, oh, I hate this guy, but I got to watch to see what he's going to do. And then the people that are picky eaters would be like, I love you, man. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know. You, you and Mark would be perfect on a channel together like that for. Are you picky, Mark? I'm picky, but I'm really simple. Like right. I take all the I take all the spices and all the ingredients out. I like really simple things. 
Like, so, what, what are your favorite stuff? What do you What do you cook for yourself? Just like basic, like I'm a meatloaf kind of guy. Like you know, like my wife makes meatloaf. Like don't put nothing in it. I'm really basic. <laughs> so I am picky, but I'm like picky basic. Yeah, I'm the same Mark, way, man. You know, my wife I'm, always complains about it all the time. Mark's beyond picky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my friends say I eat like a three year old. I'm like, well, I, I'll yeah. own that. I mean, yeah, I do. Uh, meat, potatoes. I I will use like garlic powder. Maybe a little bit of onion powder. I like cayenne. I like spicy stuff. So, you know, I don't mind that. But, yeah, if you watch my channel, I've got a – I'll do some cooking with the picky eater. I show you how to make uh, Spam and Mac. Show you how to make a, uh, a crock pot um, – I think – what did I make? Was it a beef stew, Carrie? Uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. A uh, little uh, – English muffin pizzas and, you know, simple stuff like that. And then I also did one where I was like, the picky eater ruins eggs. All right, ST, let me ask you something. When you cook eggs, do you just throw them in the pan and cook them? Or do you do anything to them before you cook them up? You know, see, I'm kind of both ways. I like scrambled eggs, and then a lot of times I just crack them and put them in. Yeah, so. well, even, whether it's scrambled or fried, I, there's that little white thing that hangs off of the yolk. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That thing's got to go, man. It has got to go. I, I'll take a, you know, I have a technique for it. I take a spoon and a fork, and I get the spoon up underneath it, and I boom, pin it, and I, boom, you got to pull it out fast. <laughs> but, you know, so, uh, yeah, and once you see it, though, you're like, oh, dude. Now I'm probably going to have to take that thing out because it's not, it looks like snot. Or, <laughs> Or something else, maybe semen. I, it looks bad, whatever it is. Oh shit! But, yeah, uh, you might be a little bit beyond Mark then. Yeah, so that is pretty picky, right there. <laughs> it's gotta go. It's gotta go. Oh shit! So, do you? Uh, I mean, I know tons of people keep up with you, but on an average day, do you get you know quite a bit of vape mail and stuff all the time with packages coming in, or is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I imagine just like anybody else that's doing this. I mean, you know, it's like my wife is sometimes like, dude, this has got to stop. <laughs> the hallway that's at, that's inside my front door, it's like it's like stacked probably. Oh, it, it's stacked. <laughs> it's, it's wide. And it's a lot of products. It gets to the point where I'm like, okay, well, you know, when these companies are asking, can we send you this, like, you know, like especially some lame-looking mod, I'm like, um, well, I, you know, look, if you want to send it, you can, if, if it's great, I'll move it up the queue. If it's good, I'll put it in the queue. And if it's just not good, I'm just going to tell you what I don't like about it and hope that'll help you improve because, you know, I don't, I don't, well, these videos for me, I don't know how long it takes for everybody else, but when I do a video, it can take me probably because I do the green screen and all that stuff, but it can take me anywhere from eight hours to more to, you know, shoot, edit, deliver all that kind of stuff with one of these videos. And I'm like, I just don't have time to do every product. I just don't. So, you know, it just get, it gets crazy sometimes. Do you do, you only do one video a day, right? I thought like, I could record. Do okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people like try to record like two a day or like Mike puts like a few videos in the queue. I don't know how the hell he does that, but like I'm I, only able to get one done a day and that's it. I don't see how people can do more than one. Yeah. I've actually filmed, Two of them. As a matter of fact, the video that I'm going to do later today for this Fu Chai Wild Fox, uh, I filmed it yesterday, and I didn't get around to editing it and all that. So I will edit that and deliver it today. So sometimes I'll do that because I'm like, well, everything's already set up. Got the you know because I have to actually switch cameras. I have both my cameras going on one tripod for the close and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Have you ever like just said, man, the day I'm doing this? freaking green screen shit is like freaking it's like too much is there maybe i need to try something else hey you know i would i don't know see i don't know what i would put up i mean this room here is where my where my uh my main workstation is but my wife is working here she works out of the home right now for uh an online bank and so it's kind of like i don't know i mean you know I, I, I feel weird about that. I'm like, do I build a little space and put a TV up there like Mark and those guys? And, or, you know, <laughs> well, yeah. So the simplicity of the green screen actually isn't that bad. Keying out that stuff. Once I get the first clip keyed out, then I just copy and paste the, 
uh, you know, all of the the settings to the other clips. It's it's not that bad. I still I like it because it kind of sets me aside. Does anybody else really do that? You know, I, I've seen Big Lou East East Coast Reviews has a black background, but it's like a sheet that's lit and it doesn't have that crisp background look that I like. I think the only person that has a green screen is uh, Rip, but his oh, Rip Trippers, yeah, he definitely does. But yeah. I don't think I. I don't think anybody else I know that does. I know uh, what's his name, um, Donnie B. Vaping. He does green screen, but his are a little bit more wilder. They're not like plain colored. Right. Well, I, will, I will say this since you brought it up though, real fast, and he's not here. I don't know where he's at, but uh, congrats to Mike because Rip put up his icon video last night. Yeah, he did. He ranted and raved over, which he should, because it's it's worth ranting and raving over. But right. I was I was very happy about that right there. It was pretty awesome. So yeah, it's very cool. We were shocked that he did a build on it. He hasn't done a build in a while. Well, he didn't actually do the build. He just well, he kind of did. But we're like, holy shit, he's doing a build. Yeah, I know that was <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, well, he was, was the guy that I turned to when I was trying to learn how to build. I was like, all right. Yeah, he had awesome build videos, like some of the best. So how long have you been vaping now, Tony? I started in July of 2013. Um, you know, I, what happened is that you know, I, I, I'm old enough that in Southern California, you could smoke in school as long as your mother or father signed your smoking pass. And mm -hmm. I had a smoking pass. You know, I was the heavy metal guy. You know, I had hair down to my down to the middle of my back and. You, if you follow me on Facebook, you've probably seen some of these throwback pictures. But, you know, uh, I wore ha handcuffs on my belt loops and stuff. <laughs> it was cool. It was great. I loved it. But anyways, I hung out in the smoking section. So mom, you know, uh, the reason why is everybody in my house smoked. It was no big deal. And, you know, there was smoke everywhere. It was, the house was always like a big smoke chamber. Mom came out to visit me here in North Carolina, which is where I ended up because of radio. And she brought me an Ego Pen and a VV Nova Mini tank, which was like horrible. But at the time, it was a lot better than gas station cigs. And she brought me some Villain Vapors, Bonnie and Clyde, which is to this day, I still vape Villain Vapors. But so she brought me all that and I tried it because I was like, this, that, those suck. I'm just going to smoke, mom. It's no big deal. And then I tried that and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. So I immediately started vaping then. So I've been vaping ever since then. Uh, and I started the channel shortly thereafter because first thing you do is go to YouTube, right? I mean, you're like, how do I use this thing? And I watched a Pete Bissardo video that was, oh, God, it was 45 minutes on how to use the VV Nova mini tank, which is like the most basic of tanks. I was like, good Lord, this is long. And then, you know, I was like, all I needed was the five minutes where you showed me how to take that coil off and clean the tank. That's all I need. And... So I was like, all right, then. so I started looking at other videos and noticed that everybody was like, this MF -er right here, man, this, this shit is the best. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Look, I curse in my real life, you know, and uh, IRL, you guys know that because you <laughs> party with me. You know, <laughs> I'm no angel, but, you know, I was like, okay, well, there needs to be a channel for, for my mom and for my friends or her friends and people that are, you know, that might get turned off by that. So I was like, well, Look, I did radio. I own a video production company. I'm gonna make a channel. I thought maybe I'd get a thousand subscribers, but it it took off. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Yeah, yours definitely took off good. Uh, but I mean, you've got good content too. So I appreciate you, gotta, that. you definitely got to have that personality to do it. Also, because I think people think, well, you know what? I can just jump behind a camera and show some stuff off, and everybody's just gonna start subbing. But you really got to have that personality to go with you too. your personality, not trying to do somebody else's shit. And I yeah. think that's what keeps people coming back for more on stuff. So, right. I get that a lot. You know, I mean, Mark, I'm sure you get this too, you know, and ST, you know, people will, they'll write and they'll go, Hey, can you tell me how to get free stuff so I can do a channel? And I'm like, well, first of all, the channel comes first, then the free stuff. And it's never free, guys. So just so you know, this is a public service announcement. None of this stuff is free. Um, if a client were to hire me to do a video, like the ones that I do uh, for products, if, like, say, somebody had a tool or something and they wanted me to show how to use that tool for their company, I would charge 1200 bucks for a video like that. So... Is it free that I got a $40 mod for doing a $1,200 video? I don't really think so. No, so definitely not. And, 
And the key to it is the answer to your question, if you're like, how do I get that stuff, is make good content. If you make content that people want to watch, people will watch it. And if people watch it, then you'll be able to get stuff, all right? If you're in it just because you want free stuff, that's the wrong reason to be in it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you, and you really don't start getting these companies willing to send you anything until you have at least 1,000, maybe 2,000 subscribers. So you got to work at it. You know? yeah, a lot of work. And I think you just kind of hit record and just, you know, just it's so easy, but really it's not easy. Like live shows are not easy. The the videos are not easy. It you is do a hard great work. job, Mark, by the way, with your live stuff. I mean, I, I have a hard time watching that long, but, you know, I'm like, because you'll get a product that I haven't gotten yet or something, or maybe I have it sitting in the queue and I'm like, let me see what he, what he thinks about it. And I'm like, ah, dang, this one's live. It's an hour and 20 minutes, you know, but. <laughs> You're really good at switching cameras and all that stuff. I'm like, man, I don't know. That that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's all of it is just hard work. That's why when people say, "Oh, you get shit for free." It's like it's not free. Like it, it is not. No, no. And I mean, just like like you said a minute ago, you're spending almost eight hours. That's a day. That's a work day. Yeah, that's that's a normal work schedule for somebody right there. And if you just got one device. To do a video for that long, I mean, <laughs> your yeah. time more outweighs the the cost of that device right there. Well, and YouTube, it's funny because people also go, well, you make a crap load of money on YouTube. I'm like, mm, do I? Uh, you know, uh, YouTube, it's a fickle thing. It doesn't pay a whole lot of money. And, you know, it's, it's like per thousand views, you might make a couple dollars. <laughs> you know, so... It's you not don't really start making lot. money on YouTube until you hit like the two hundred thousand subscribers. Right. That's exactly. when you start making actual like money that you can, you know, Rip YouTube. Trippers money. Yeah, exactly. dude, Rip Trippers is making enough money off his YouTube channel buy a car and give it away. There you go. Uh, exactly. Say something. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's 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 crazy. And Mark, I don't know if you've been noticing this, but revenues are down on YouTube because there's like some kind of weird uh, boycott going on. Yep. These, these advertisers are afraid to, I don't blame them because say that there's an ISIS video and the ISIS propaganda um, channel is actually monetized. Well, does Chevy really want to play before an ISIS video? Probably not. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because then you're supporting ISIS. But, uh, but by the same token, they're hurting little guys. You know, I mean, if I made 500 bucks off of YouTube, I'm pretty happy. That's 500 bucks. That's a couple you know, that's maybe one of my bills and take the wife out a couple times or something. But, you know, yeah. it's, it's down significantly and it won't go back up until these advertisers return. And yeah. I guess maybe for the viewer it's good because they don't see as many commercials. Well, and that was kind of my next question. Have you noticed anything in past videos that have been kind of tampered with by YouTube? Not uh, me. Mark had. Mark, what did you have on yours happen? No, it wasn't my channel. Like a lot of people have been getting their videos like uh, demonetizing turned off. Yeah, the ambitions had two videos. Uh, I don't know if Mike did, but I know a lot of people. I don't know if it's because of like swearing or what it is, but that's part of it. That's I read. I had none have, pulled yet, so thank God. They they have their forums up there for YouTube, and I was looking at one of them, and that's one of the things. Like if if they flag it for swearing, then they may demonetize it. You know, they they'll just just that video. And then people are like, well, you should be able to do what you want in your video, which is, you know, true. Yeah, you should have the right to speak the way you want to speak. But if there's an advertiser in that video, then you should, you know, I, I don't know. It's 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 weird. There should be some kind of guidelines. Like if you monetize your videos, uh -huh. you agree not to swear, not to have any pornography or any kind of, you yeah. know, kind of crazy talk. But if you un if you don't monetize, then you can do whatever the hell you want. That's right. how they should do it. I agree. And, and what's so crazy about that is you think there's probably millions on top of millions of videos on YouTube. All right. And think of how many have like some real crazy shit in it, but they're still monetized. And it's like, how, how are those still left up? You know? Right, 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 right. So I, I don't know. It, I'm starting to agree with others a little bit. I mean, it really seems like something's crazy going on with YouTube lately, and I'm getting to wonder if there's not some crazy change about to happen here pretty soon that, you know, is going to force us to do other things. 
Well, the bottom line is this. YouTube is about making money, all right? Not necessarily for us, but YouTube itself, Google and YouTube want to make money. So we make videos, they play the commercials, and they get 98% of the profit from it or more. And, you know, so they want content. You know, they don't want to have to demonetize anything because they're like, we want to play these commercials. We want to be able to do this. So, you know, um, but they're always messing with stuff. I get people that will tell me all the time that they got unsubscribed automatically. And I'm like, yep. Okay. How's that? And so yeah, that's happened too, a million times. Yeah. But I, I just think, you know, if you monetize, there should be set rules and guidelines. If you're going to monetize your video, then you should be, you should follow some rules. And I tell you what, they are quick on the job of it for uh, case in general. So I did a show, I guess it was roughly half a year ago, and Mark shows a video of, uh, it was just released. I mean, the show came on and the video had been released like a, maybe a day before that. It was where the guy had walked into the little convenience store and started digging in his pockets and the batteries blew up in his pocket. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we were showing that on the screen share with this and showed it and like okay yada yada we talked about it for a while as soon as the the feed went off i got uh flagged i got an email stating that i it was a copyright infringement of what i just did with that really and i was like wow you know it happened just like that you know so uh, and i was like okay so that is like the only video out of my bunch that I never went back and edited that out so I could keep monetizing it because right. it was a big part of the show. And I just said, well, you know what? I'll leave it unmonetized where they can still see what was going on with everything. But they, they were quick on that. I couldn't believe, like I said, the show hadn't been off, but maybe 15 minutes. And it was like, wow. So... They're definitely quick on the case with shit. <laughs> that that is well, you know, they have a, an algorithm that looks for, um, you know, for uh, for copyright stuff, and yeah, pretty crazy. Yep, they caught that quick. So yeah, Mark, I, I, I've uploaded a video before, and like within minutes, email boop. This this video has not been monetized because you used a piece of music from so and so. Actually, what we'll do is give the profits that are made from this video to the person that, that had that music. You know what I wish? Wish you know, like I, I have a Vimeo account. If anybody's interested in seeing some of my professional work, you can go to Vimeo.com/slash Tony's Video. I think is what it is. Vimeo.com/slash Tony's Video. But what I was going to say is that on Vimeo, if you need to edit a video or change the content. You can actually go in and replace that video with a new version of it, and it doesn't change your view count or anything else. It'd be really nice if YouTube would do that, because cool. then if you did have a problem, then you could go in there and change it. You know, yeah. fix it. Would be nice. Well, and a lot of people don't realize too that YouTube. And I'm sorry, folks, if we're just rambling on about YouTube a bit. I know this is a vape thing, but yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but no, no, I, I'm I, I, I like talking about this. Uh, YouTube's also on a point system. So your channel is can be in good standing, but if yeah. something goes on, you can get points dinged against you to the point of, it's like anything else. You get enough points against you, they can pull your channel. So you gotta be real careful what you do. So if you hear us cutting up or joking about, oh shit, please don't play that song or something, it's because oh, yeah. we already know what's about to happen here. We don't wanna go through any of that crap. Yeah. And when I got notified of that, they made it clear that, hey, there'll be no points against your channel, but we are letting you know. Because that video was so new and it had just surfaced, they were, it was like they weren't certain whether or not they felt that they could actually show that somewhere until their side of the bunch, whoever actually had the video, right. did what they needed to do. So... So it said nothing against you, but you just you can't monetize this video. And I was like, okay, well that's cool, as long as you don't hit any points against my channel. But another yeah. thing that I've been noticing lately are a yeah. lot of uh, people are buying subscribers and buying views. I'm not going to say. How I'm not does that work? Me, but how do you how do you do that? I'm curious because I want to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> There's apparently websites out there where you can you pay and. You get more views, you get more subscribers on your videos. I got an email about that actually not too long ago. I was like, what? 
Okay. Yeah. And there's yeah. actually a few a few vape reviewers that are currently doing it at the moment, which is I don't see the point in it. Like, why would you yeah. want to buy views? Like, what is it? I mean, other than it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's like, why do uh, this? If you, if you're small and you wanted to get your channel to get noticed, you know, because because you know, ST, you're talking about how it ranks on points. Well, it also ranks your videos. Like, you know, when you're watching a video and you see a video over here on the side, it ranks them based on you know your the amount of comments, the amount of shares and likes and views. So, if you wanted to elevate your channel, you'd go ahead and buy some. Same thing with Instagram. Now, Instagram, as soon as you uh, start a new Instagram, you get all these things. You know, buy followers. I'm like, dude, I've never done that. Every one of my followers, what twenty six thousand on there is, is uh, it's they're all organic, and you know, so I, I think it's important. I, I don't understand buying them myself, Mark. I'm with you. I, I'm just like I don't get it. Yeah, it's just it's it's crazy. All right, we better we better start staring it back. I'm starting to see chat like what the hell? No. All right, guys. So yeah, what what do you guys think is exciting that's coming out? What are you excited about with vape? <sighs> I want to see Actually, you. I got one in my hands right now. I'm loving my icon. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, I want to see this monstrosity that Kanger made, the five battery mod. That thing was, was that real? Yeah, yes. it was real. Is oh. oh. yeah, people. If y'all have not seen this yet, uh, <laughs> fairly new photos going around. There is a five eighteen six fifty battery device from Kanger about to come out. Uh, what do you think it, what, what mod does it most likely look like there, Mark? What is it shaped like? Uh, hey, where is that thing? What was that mod? The, um, I forgot the name of the mod. It's shaped like one, uh, I forgot. I think it's one of the eye sticks or something. I forget. It's not really that big. Like you'd think it'd be humongous, but it's not as big as you would think, but five batteries. Holy God. Uh, that's crazy. It kind of looks like that Rouleau 300. Yeah, it's got and it's got a little, little extra bump in it for the fifth battery. I just, I don't. I don't well, I mean, I get it. I guess if you like never want to run out of battery, but it's like, you know, what? I don't get that. Really. I don't either. It's kind of like if you're willing to go five eighteen six fifties, you might as well just go get a lipo pack device and just be done with it. I yeah. mean. And that that's getting pretty crazy because exactly. Well, this it's one's not the lipo though. I need. To oh, get... that's the that's the dual one. Yeah. Yeah, this is the dual. It's the We the People version, but yeah, vaporized nomads. It's very nice. I like it a lot. Nice. I just I've kind of gotten to the point because I've got three lipoed bosses, and I just pretty much use them all the time because of, of course I love them anyway. But the battery life I get on them, dude, I can because I can constantly switch out between them. It's just like I have an endless amount, you know, but right. I, you know, changing five batteries out all the time. I'm That's the other it. thing. Five. You're like, okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, you have and to have think, a six battery charger just for that thing. Well, and think about it like this too. Say like, you're going to use that device. Right. And go out somewhere or take it or whatever. Now, needless to say, you should get through an evening or a day with one. I would think, but if you're uncertain and you vape at very high wattages, you're going to have to probably carry an additional five batteries with you. Uh -huh. And it's like, man, I mean. Well, the other thing is, how heavy is that thing? You know, that's what I'm curious about. They're not light. They're, they're heavy. They're, you know, if you're carrying, like, even that uh, the Wismec 300, I was like, this is too big. It's like a car battery. It is. That jumpers. And then buying the batteries. You know, those are not cheap either. So now you're talking... 50 bucks for batteries? Yep. That's and, probably how much the mod costs. And that's my curiosity with that right there is I know it's five batteries, but actually, all right, like say somebody like me that vapes around 100 watts most of the time, give or take a little, how long am I actually going to get out of that right there? You know, is it is it going to be something that if I leave in the morning and I'm really using it quite a bit, am I going to have – Am I going to be able to actually make it the day to get home before I've got to change out? Right. And I just don't want to carry around because I carry enough shit as it is. And I, I just don't want to have to carry around that many more batteries with me. But Right. 
Well, you know, I'm using a lot of these squonkers and they're, you know, single 18650. And here's the, the thing about squonkers, and, and I get people all the time because they know that I'm into it. So they're like, okay, well, answer a couple questions for me. What, um, you know, I think one of the biggest questions is I, I want to dual 18650. I'm like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of a squonker. I think the people that use these, they want to carry around a small box. You know, some of them are really tiny. I don't have it up here right now, but the clockwork or, you know, the, the, the Franken skull or the octopus, any of those are really itty bitty. And the idea is that because you carry around your liquid inside the mod, you just squeeze it and you're good to go. I don't want to carry around a big mod and to put two batteries, even two batteries in one with a bottle of liquid, then you're talking about a Rouleau. Right, and I, I, I only carry, I only use those at home, so I don't mind having an extra battery in a little plastic case with me and pop that in there. I don't mind that at all. Yeah, two batteries is fine, but five is a whole other story. With it's me. funny, it, it's like Kanger like kind of disappeared for a while, then it just came back and bam, there's five batteries. It's like yeah, right. <laughs> they Plus, they're kind of like the uh, the the starter kit guys, you know. Yep. Where is this coming from? Exactly. That's we're all. We, shocked. Know, we had I had Basardo on the show right when he got back from his China trip. That one they just took a little while back. Right. And we were asking him. Okay. We were talking about all the different companies they visited. And we were like, so what's going on with Kanger Tech? You know, they used to be the shit, and then it's just kind of like they kick out a thing or two, and you don't really hear much about them. And at that time, he said, well, they've got some new stuff that's about to come out, you know, but I can't really say right now because, of course, it just – and I think what it was around the Chinese New Year about the time when they came back and I had them on. So he said right after that, you're going to start seeing some of the stuff that they've done. So obviously that was one of the things in the works there, but – I don't know, dude. I just, like I said, I started off using their tanks when they had the sub mini and the nano and all that. Loved them. But then after that, it's kind of like, uh, there's nothing else I really have cared about with them. So, right. right. Yeah. You know, it, it's because, you know, the whole sub ohm thing before, I'm just showing the, uh, the battery in here. There's a lipo inside this. I love this thing, but they're not available anymore. The Halcyon from Las Vegas. So, yeah, you know, Kanger and Aspire, before they came out with their two sub ohm tanks, you know, there was – everything was mount to lung. I can't even mount to lung now. I haven't done it in so long. But, you know, before they came out with those, it was all 1.8, you know. Ooh, I, when I got down to 1.2 coil, I was like, woo, now I'm really getting some vapor. <laughs> but I tried that, uh, you know, the Aspire Nautilus – or not the Nautilus, but the Atlantis, and was like, dude, now we're talking. Yeah. And, you know, I, I could tell that Kanger and Aspire at that time, they were really competing to see who was going to come out with that thing first, that sub ohm tank. Um, but then once I tried it, I was like, now I get it. I understand exactly what, you know, what, what you're talking about, why you want to do sub ohm, because so much more flavor, so much more vapor. And it's just a lot for me, it's more satisfying. But yeah, you're right. It was like all came out at the same time. And, um, you know, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no Kanger. And I'll tell you, Kanger videos do really good on my channel. The number one most viewed channel on my, my video on my channel right now is the Subbox Mini Kit. I have almost a million views on it. Wow. Now, if I could have had a dollar for every view on that, but no. Yeah. I, same thing with me. My highest viewed video is my sub my sub tank Nano, and I've got like 102,000 views on that. Right. Like a sub tank Nano, you know, but – yeah. But, but, you know, back in the day, that was the shit. You know, everybody was wanting to, you know, look at them, see them. And I think what happened with my video with that one, it kind of got tied into indoor smoker stuff a little bit because they oh, yeah. were big into the Kanger stuff. And somehow the YouTube thing, it got pulled in a little bit. So if you look it up now, you'll see indoor smoker and then like me or Tia – and then so it was getting a lot of views off of it. But yeah. but beginner devices always seem to get quite a bit of quite a bit more hits than what other stuff will. Because that's really what people are looking for, I think, on YouTube anyway. Right. Out of curiosity. But I you know, I, I remember in the beginning I thought 
Oh my God, I got to be the first to get this video on. I got to be the first one, man, because, you know, I had to get, you know, I was like, if you're the first one, you're going to get all them views. And it is true. You will get a lot of views if you're the first one because everybody wants to see it. But I just got to the point where I, I man, I was like, it was, I, I'm not going to kill myself to get a video on, you know, I'm, I'm just going to take, take it at my own pace. And like I said, there's a big queue. So I kind of try to use, you know, people that are on my Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I will put I'll put the product up there and if everybody wants to see it then I'll move that up in the queue a little bit. I just you know and if it's something that I'm dying to see, it's gonna get moved up. You know? That Archon Squonker, man, I was like right away, sure, I'll get that on. So, so Squonker's pretty much your thing nowadays, right? Dude, once I started doing that, I was like, I I'm having a hard time using a tank now. <laughs> it's like I, I you know, it's so much better. I I you know, and I I Got to the point where I got sick of tanks like, say, the Duos. It's a nice tank, right? But it's freaking giant. Look at that. That's on top of the Triad. It's yep. big. And I got to the point where I was like, I just, I don't want these towering tanks. It's, you know, uh, so you get a little tiny thing like the Hadley on there, and it's just so much better. It's low profile. Everything is compact, and I, I love it. Plus the flavor. You get a good build on one of these things, you're good to go. Well, I've been seeing this scroll along a little bit from different people. Did you get a crown through yet? I did just get one, yeah. What do you think about it, or have you even used it? I haven't used it. I broke it down, took it apart, looked at it, was like, okay, well, let me put this up on Instagram and see what people say. It seems that people want to see it. So have you used it? I've started using mine a couple of days ago. I broke my black one out. Uh, I kind of like think? the red drip tip with it, but... The coils are underrated on this thing because okay. they state they're like uh, 50 to 90 or something like that on the 0.25. And we realized the other night when we were like in private bullshitting, uh, it's like, dude, you can crank the wattage up higher on these things. So yep. I pushed mine up to 100 and it's been vaping perfect. And you can actually go really? a little over 100 and still get a good vape and, you know, nothing crazy going on. So, I think they were on trying to go the safer side this time because of some of the issues they were having with the crown two coils. But I was vaping on it for, I had it for like two weeks now and I've been vaping on it at like 80 Watts or so the recommended wattage. Right. And the vape wasn't really like the greatest. And then we cranked it up to hundred and 120 Watts and it's like so much better and the coils can keep up. So I think they're under, they're really like underrated the power ratings on here yeah but at 100 watts this thing no burnt hits no nothing like so far it's just doing awesome so they just covered their ass by putting 80 watts on the coil yeah because they don't want to you know that's the other, so do you get let me ask you this here's a question do you guys prime your coils yeah yep. prime all my coils <laughs> I don't do it, you know, and people will go, oh, you didn't prime that coil, and I'm like, dude, listen, I have my own way of doing, I'm sorry, my dog is chewing on the uh, windowsill over here, um, but yeah, you know, I have my own way of doing it, and I have patience, so when I get a new tank and I put a new coil in there, I'll put liquid usually on the, you know, on the intake holes, but not on the top, because every time I do that, I get gurgling and spitting, and it just never calms down, so I just started putting them in the tank and letting them sit, and let them sit for 10 or 15 minutes. And they work just fine. I think that, you know, the company started, a, a few YouTubers probably said, oh, you got to prime these coils. And then the companies went, yeah, we're going to put that in our, our manuals. So now everybody thinks that you have to do that. Well, if you have some patience, let it sit for a little bit, take a few hits off of it without firing it, it'll work just as good. Yeah. And, and it's, it's funny you say that because that's the person I used to be. When I didn't have much at all, when a new tank would come in the mail, I'd get it throw some juice in, I'd be like, man, I can't wait. i just start hitting, I'd be like, oh, shit. But that's the way I'll do it. Now, I still prime my coils, but I'll put juice in it, and then I just let it set for a while, and I'll come up later on, pick it up, start vaping on it. Right. I'll flood my coil. I do it every single time. Even yeah. though some people say you don't have to, I still just throw right. weird like that. But, it yeah, is, every it time is I do that, it's enjoyable. Oh, excuse me. It, it's definitely an enjoyable vape on this one, though. I really, um, when I first hit it, uh, to me, crown coils used to be where you could kind of taste the cotton a little bit. It wasn't so much a burnt hit, but you could just taste the cotton, it was a nastier taste, and then yeah. the coil would break in. But it's like the flavor's a little muted this time. 
and then you use it just a little bit and bam, it starts chucking along. So, okay. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it looks, it looks really good. So, you know, yeah. I, I was, I was impressed by that. You know, the crown, the original crown was a great tank. It's just, you know, it's just way overrated. I, mean, I use mine. I can't tell you for how long uh, yeah. I got my first one in. There was like everything else got put to the side. That's all I ever used. And then finally it was like something else came along. I forget, but mm -hmm. took its spot. But yeah, that was probably one of my longest used tanks. Uh, the original I, one. I'll give these tanks a good, you know, usage when I get them, you know, and then something, cause that's the thing. We're always testing stuff. So I tend to, find something new pretty quickly but the the only tank that i really keep going back to i still love the clado tank i i have what four of the standard ones and two of the 120 watt the clado 120s still love that tank it's funny though because you know when it comes to these things people will go do you get vapor lock man i'm like I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about i've never gotten this vapor lock that people talk about you know uh and if you do open the lid close it up is it really that difficult to do that but you know Personally, and then the other thing that was funny with that is, and I talked about this on uh, on Vape Team, was that right after I did my video for the Clado and talked about how great it was, well, Grim Green put out a video, and then Ruby Root put out a video, and both of those videos, they talked about that it had some rubber band taste in the coils, and I was like, I don't, I have never had that. So people, yeah. you know, without without trying it themselves, people immediately started to parrot that back. Like, oh, well, these have a bad taste. I'm like, have you tried it? And they're like, no, but Grim Green said so. I'm like, well, <laughs> just because one reviewer or two reviewers say that, and remember, Grim and you, Ruby know each other, they probably compared notes, and they're, yeah, I did taste that. You know, it's kind of a power suggestion type of thing. So, you yeah. know, I still love that tank. It's a great tank. And I think that tank is what saved Aspire. They were kind of tanking at the time. They weren't doing real well. But that tank, it really picked it up for them. Yep. Quick question for you, Tony, from John. He wants to know how many years you lived in Vegas? I lived there for four years, and I think I moved from there in 2001, Carrie? Yeah. Yeah, 2001 is when I moved from there. I worked at 96.3 KKLZ, the classic rock station. <laughs> that sounded so radio. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I had a lot of good time in, at that radio station, man. I was the night guy there. And because it's nights in Las Vegas, you know, I had adult stars on my show. I had, you know, I had a feature called Dr. Kramer's Hump Day Clinic where people would call in and tell me that they haven't been getting any lately from their mate. And I would get their mate on the phone as a third party call. And I'd be like, so I, I understand you haven't been putting out lately. They'd be like, what? Awesome. And then if, if they agreed to do it, I would give them three hours at the Del Mar Adult Motel and a case of Budweiser. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it was good times, man. You know, I had a great time. I actually put out a, uh, a, a CD there. Here, check this out. Hold on a second. Where is that? You're in the other room the closet. No, it's right here. It's a little dusty. But here, check this out. So, <laughs> she's an adult film star. She did the cover of it with me. And uh, that was the, the CD right there. We sold the CD at the adult superstores in Las Vegas. <laughs> it's like these big blue uh, stores that are out there that it's all adult stuff. We sold that there. I made like, I don't know, was, I think $4,000 that I wanted to donate to charity. I tried to donate it to the Susan G. Coleman Foundation for breast cancer. They wouldn't take it because of the content. So then I was like, all right, well, how about I give it to pediatric AIDS? And the pediatric AIDS people were like, yeah, we can't really take that because of the content. I was like, seriously? Jesus. So uh, I ended up giving it to Media Partners for Pets because they needed money to help get pets adopted. So I love pets, and that's what I did. That's so, awesome. What actually made you move from Vegas? Well, radio is kind of like being in the military. You know, you end up having to move a lot. And for me, even when I had good ratings, they would, it's, it's how it always is in radio. They bring in a new manager or, you know, a new program director, a new general manager or something, and they go, oh, we got to stir stuff up, so we're going to get rid of some people, and, you know, that's how it goes. Um, so I ended up moving quite a bit, you know, uh, every four years or so. So I was in Vegas for four years, and I went to Memphis. I was there for four years. I came out here to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is where I live now, 
And I was here for two years, and then a guy that I worked with in Memphis had gone to Jersey to be a general manager, and he was like, "Man, we gotta get the we gotta get the uh, get the band back together." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Dude, for two years now since you've been gone, every time I'd go out in the public with the radio group, they'd be like, "Did you guys fire Kramer?" So he goes, "I want that at my station in New Jersey," and I was like, "I don't know, man. I've never heard. I haven't heard a lot of good stuff about Jersey." So I uh, ended up taking the job. Uh, they paid, they were like, we'll pay you three times what you make there in the Outer Banks. So I was like, mm. and it's close to New York. So if you're in radio, you want to work in New York, Detroit, LA, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, maybe I can get the job in New York. And I took the job and it was hell. I was in radio hell. Uh, they treated me like I was some kind of country bumpkin, you know, like, uh, you know, this is my first rodeo. And I was like, dude, I, I've been a big markets, man. This is no big deal. Uh, and then it turned out that the guy that I worked with, he turned out to be a little bit of a, a little cokehead, and uh, I think things at the time, anyways, he's re recovered now. But he uh, he ended up being my demise at that radio station. And then I was like, at that point, I go, dude, do I really want to do radio anymore? And I'll tell you this: radio used to be show business. Now it's just business, right? Uh, they haven't learned to adapt with um, you know all the new ways to be entertained, phones and all that kind of stuff. I contend that. They, they got to the point where they said, you need to all just shut up and read the liner card and play the music. And I contend that the reason why people listened to the radio back then is, you know, they had to put up with 12 minutes of commercials per hour. Uh, I contend that they listened to it because they liked the personalities. So when you shut that down, that took away your audience. I used and to always listen to the radio. Not, not anymore so much. You probably, Mark, you probably knew the DJ. You probably knew his dog's name and all that kind of, you're like, oh, I love this guy. I listen to him and, and you know, whatever. Yeah, in Chicago we had uh, oh, yeah. Man Cow in Chicago. I used to always listen to him. He was. Yeah, like, I also had Brandemeyer there. Yeah, there are a lot of cool, a lot of cool guys down here to listen to in the morning. Well, I'm, yeah. from, I'm from Waukegan originally, Mark. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. Nice. See, yeah. I'm doing something I thought I never would do. Uh, I started doing the satellite radio thing, and. Uh, so there's not many commercials on satellite radio because it's, I guess that's part of paying for it. You don't have to listen to a bunch of shit. Right. But I mean, really, I just drive to and from work is when I listen to it, unless I'm traveling. But uh, that, pretty much everything else I do now is internet wise. So, you know, but I know there's still millions of people that listen to the radio all the time. But yeah. I listen to all the old Howard Stern shows on YouTube. Yeah. Well, he was definitely my influence for my Vegas show. You know, at the time, I was a big fan. And, you know, I remember I'd have to get pirated tapes of him. You know, I'd have to, like, ask somebody in another market, hey, can you send me some tapes? It was like, you know, crack. I'd get those tapes and I'd listen to them. Howard Stern did talk about me one time on the show because somebody had called him and said, man, you got to watch out for this Kramer in Las Vegas, man. He's 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 coming up. He's you got a show like yours. And, you know, he's got adult stars on there and stuff. And, you know, he did this bit and that bit and Howard listened to him for a minute and he goes, yeah, well, he's stealing everything that I've ever done. And as long as he admits that, which I did openly, I was like, I'm a big fan. And absolutely. I watched your movie, read your books, you know, everything. So he goes, as long as he admits that, then more power to him. I was like, okay. Woo, he talked about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, another, tell everybody about, and I know you did it on the vape team the other night, but we talked about it when we were in Atlanta, uh, uh, about how, how these companies, what? This scares me because I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. No, 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 no. It was just about, uh, I love to hear about how, you know, you'll take your devices out a lot of times, like out on the beach, and you snap photos off and yeah. you know, kind of do stuff like that. So you're big into photography and all that. Right. Yeah, I love photography, man. I mean, you know, it's funny because I, when I was a kid, I did a lot of photography. Uh, I always had either a Polaroid or a, you know, a brownie or some camera or another. And, you know, when I got into video, you know, once I left radio, I started doing video when I left radio because I had started doing videos for our morning show because there was no, the real YouTube wasn't big when I was in Memphis. Um, we actually would stream the videos from our own website. We had, uh, one time we had Tanya Harding. She was fighting on an undercard on a Mike Tyson fight. And she came in and we had Ren, our stunt guy, uh, come in there and let her punch him in the stomach wearing a boxing glove, which I still have with her autograph on it somewhere. Um, and 
picked him up. So we videoed and we slow mowed it and we put you know a little ninety four on the Buzz logo in the corner. And I got the bug from doing that. I got excited. And so when I got out of radio, I was like, well, I have the the ability. I can do voiceover work. I know how to edit. I just need to get some better camera equipment. And uh, well, let's do that. So that's that's why I started the video business in the first place. And then I bought a DSLR to shoot video with, so I could get that film look to it. And yep. I just fell right back into taking photos. And I love like micro photography. Like if you look at my Instagram, a lot of close ups. You know, like a bottle sitting on the beach between the seagrass and you know with the ocean in the background. I love that type of thing. So yeah, take a lot of photos. And to me, that's some of the best places that you can get pics at, like in an area like that. You can always find an amazing spot just to set something there, and it's like, wow, that's that's a badass looking picture. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, there's a little bit of having an eye for it. You have to go, okay, what you know, because sometimes I'll go out to take pictures of, of vape stuff, and I just take a walk, and I bring a backpack with a bunch of vape stuff in it. I just take a walk, and I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, that tree looks cool. Stick yeah. that right in that tree right there. <laughs> and then Carrie, my wife, is sometimes she's cracking up because we'll go to the beach and, and I'll be like, oh, I got to get a picture on this dune right here. And, you know, I, I, I have to pretty much squat all the way down, look like my ass is in the air trying to get the cat. I'm like, I get that. I get that. Get you. And then she's over there laughing like, man, people are looking at you funny. I'm like, hey, well, you got to do what you got to do to get the picture. <laughs> yeah. So living so close to the beach like you do, are you a person that's like sick of the beach, like actually going to the beach and never sick of it, man. And all that? Yeah, in the summertime when the yeah, <laughs> I just saw myself over here. Uh, when the uh, you know summertime when the bikinis are out, no, when the summertime when it's nice, I'm always like if I can get out there every single day and take a walk from one beach access to the pier or whatever. I'm out there, man. I freaking love it. It's awesome. And, you know, so if you, if, if anybody's curious, take a look at Google Maps and look up Kill Devil Hills. You'll see that Kill Devil Hills and Nags Head, that's the area where I live. Um, it's really just like a little strip of island. And from the window that I'm looking out right now, I can see the water for the sound, which would be like the bay. And then looking out the back, I can see over the dunes, I can see the ocean like a little teeny peekaboo, you know, peekaboo view. So the water, it's a big thing out here. And it's funny, the Outer Banks, they call it a, a drinking village with a fishing problem. So if you like fishing, this place has a lot of fishing. You know, it's good, good times for that. In fact, it's even on Wicked Tuna now. You'll see Wicked Tuna, Outer Banks. Yeah, so that's 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 where I live. It's cool. You like, you like to get out and do deep sea fishing or anything like that or – I worked for a couple fishing shows and on that Vimeo channel, if you go to Vimeo.com slash Tony's video, you see a couple trailers from the fishing show that I did. It's very difficult to be a cameraman on a fishing show because you've you know got a shoulder mounted camera, this eyes closed, this one's in the viewfinder, and the boat is moving. <laughs> we did a bluefin epi uh, episode where we had 10 to 15 foot waves out there. And the boat's... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, you know, I never got sick, uh, you know, knock on wood, you know, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I like the boat ride more than I'd like the fishing. So gotcha. I'll pretty much always go out if somebody's going and wants, wants me to go. I'm like, I'm in, but you know, I'll, I'll fish, but I like the boat ride. I bring a bunch of beer and I'm good to go. I like my beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that in Atlanta. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Or cocktails, you know. I I, I don't I, I don't discriminate. You know, if I start off with beer, I have no problem jumping over to Crown and back to beer. I, you know, it doesn't bother me. Because yeah, we had we had somewhat of a what patio party that first night at the hotel, and uh, it was well, got down to where it was just me, Mike, uh, Phenom, and Tony. Everybody else went upstairs, went to their hotel room and all this and that. Everybody had to go back. Mike, to yeah, Mike and Phenom had both were trying to get Ubers to take them back to their hotel. Yep. And he had like four or five of them stand them up. And we, I was like, my keys were up in my hotel room. I said, you know what? I'll go grab my keys. I'll run y'all guys back. So Atlanta uh, is probably, I guess, got one of the worst Uber systems, I guess, in the world for uh, – not showing up at all, but I got hosed on a couple, but I did end up with a couple nice ones. There was a nice lady that picked me up from a party that I went to on Sunday night. 
uh, down in downtown. And on the way back, she's like, tell me about this vaping thing. And she smoked three packs of cigarettes. I said, girl, I'll tell you what, man, you know, you, you send me an email, gave her my card. I said, you send me an email and I will send you a couple of, you know, little kits to get you started. And she's like, okay. So I answered all of her questions and that's what it's really all about. I usually carry one, one or two uh, vape items in the truck that I can give away. Cause if I ran into somebody and I start talking to them about it, I'm like, boom, I'm going to hook you up. Yep. So, you know, um, I, I like to do that. It's a good thing. you yeah. got to do your, your due diligence to help people get off of cigarettes because that's what it's really all about. When it comes to it, you know, I get all thrilled about my new squonker or something like that. But um, yep. what's awesome to me is that I can be around a, a whole group of people smoking and I don't want one, <laughs> you know? It's, exactly. That's what's awesome. Because exactly. nothing else worked for me. I tried hypnotism. I tried patches. I tried gum. Tried all that stuff, and none of it worked. Everything I went back to smoking. No, nope, I've tried quite a few times. Not with a not with a whole lot of products, but I have tried. Always failed, but and even tried electronic cigarettes one time. The little blue cigs that kind of worked, and then I jumped right back. And then finally, finally, I went in, bought a, a good starter kit, and never looked back. So, but well, good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, the gum, the gum worked a little bit for me, but it wasn't really convenient. You couldn't really drink or eat or anything when you're chewing the gum. Right. And it burned my mouth. Yeah, it did. That's what kind of what satisfied me was the nicotine would, like, burn a little bit. Like, that's the only thing I liked about it. Right. Well, folks, we have actually exceeded our time limit just a little bit, but I want to thank Tony for coming on. Hopefully we can get him back some point in time yeah, we'll come again. back and join us. Absolutely. Uh, we'll do it again. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, now I got to do Mark's show. Yes. That's a pretty bad show. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about Mark's show here in just a minute, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to, I want to thank Tony for coming on. Thank all everybody for watching. Uh, we got a GoVad thing going on my channel. Go on there. I've got a video for a chance to win a GoVad. I'm going to be announcing that next week. Uh, and, yeah, that's about it. So we're going to get out of here. Same time, same place next week. Uh, any final things you want to say, Tony? Later on today, this will be on the channel, that Fuchai Wild Fox with the printer cartridge that you fill up with liquid. It really looks just like a printer cartridge. But um, I'll have that on there later on today, and I'm giving one of these away, the red one. Nice. nice. Don't forget tonight, vape team, 10 o'clock Eastern. I always get that one mixed up in my head. And uh, don't forget us on Sunday, not another vape show, 7 o'clock Central Time. So we're going to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. We out of here. Adios. Bye-bye.